Ladies and gentlemen, I have traveled to Brazil to join a conservation project named Regua. I will be studying butterflies and moths here as a researcher. I even have my own research accommodation here. But one of the moths in this forest that you really, really want to have to see is a giant that doesn't easily reveal itself. It is the Black Witch. Superstitious people are even afraid of it, saying that its appearance is perhaps a bad omen. So, how do we see this Black Witch? Well, there are several ways that we can use to attract moths, such as using a light trap at night. However, the Black Witch is often not fooled by artificial light. In fact, the species is notorious for rarely coming to any moth trap. But they do have a soft spot for rotting fermenting fruit. You see, this, these very large moths have a proboscis and need to eat a lot of food to sustain their large bodies. And therefore, we've placed some fruit here. It's rotting bananas. Now tonight I'm going to be watching over these rotting fermenting fruits, which should be perfect food for the Black Witch. And let's see if we can lure the queen of the jungle with these rotting bananas tonight. Finding the animals we want always takes a little bit of good luck and patience. Guys, keep an eye open. While I'm waiting here, I'm confident some huge black witches could arrive tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm hot and sweaty because I'm in a rainforest. But I'm also hot and sweaty because I'm seeing large moths. And nothing makes me hotter and sweatier than large moths. Let's catch them with my net and examine these beautiful creatures. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I am truly happy that I am able to do work like this. It's been a dream of mine for a long time. It's cool I can finally make a difference and see some of my dream species uh, up close for real.
Wow, they arrived. So what do we have here? This is known as Ascafala odorata, also known as the black witch moth. And these large moths that are found in tropical places on the American continent are crazy for rotting fruit. Here's a tip. Try fermenting rotting banana and if you like, add some beer and then check back at night and photograph the moths that are attracted to your fruit. If you live in South American rainforest, there's a good chance you can attract this marvelous animal too. Some indigenous cultures associate the animal with bad luck or an omen of disease or death, giving them the name Black Witch. Despite their large size and superstitions aside, these animals are actually quite harmless. This is actually my first time seeing black witches in real life in the wild. You guys are witnessing the first time I ever found them. And they are seriously large and beautiful moths. Interestingly, black witches are less interested in coming to artificial lights than they are interested in coming to rotten fruit. If you want to attract large rabbits, Try the baiting method with food instead, instead of artificial light. So what's next? I'm going to capture and photograph them. But why? That's because I'm an entomologist working for a natural reserve in Brazil. And my job is to photograph and film all the remarkable species of invertebrates that we can find in this natural reserve. With a heavy focus on moths, because moths are my specialism, let's get started. All right, people, I'm going to catch them. I'm going to catch them. And then I'm going to make a close-up of them tomorrow in the morning when I have good light. Let's skip to tomorrow. Wow, here they are, two enormous black witch moths. I actually had many individuals. Here's just two of them. Don't worry, I will release all of them back to nature after photographing and filming them. Why do these two moths look so different? Well, because they are a male and a female. Females of Ascafala odorata can be distinguished from the males because they have a creamy white band that runs over their wings. Isn't that neat? Now you can distinguish them too. In the folklore of many Central American cultures, it's associated with death or misfortune. The black witch lives from the Southern United States, Mexico and Central America all the way down to Brazil, which in my opinion is a respectably large distribution. Adults feed on overripe rainforest fruit, especially bananas, and larvae consume the leaves of plants. Most of its host plants are legumes. It favors acacia species, but also abitia, Kentucky coffee tree or gymnoclades, and candlebush or senna. It's also possible to find it and uh, because in uh, in Inga and Prosopsis, because I found suggestions of the fact these could be possible host plants. Interestingly, the moth is mostly tropical in distribution, but adults can migrate northwards in rare occasions, even all the way up to Canada during summer, which is crazy. However, I couldn't find any evidence that adults can survive the winter, so they either migrate back or simply perish from lower temperatures later in the year. They seem to have a long lifespan, although how long precisely is not known to me, but more than several weeks at least, and they are able to sustain themselves if there is plenty of food available to them. As with a lot of frugivorous moths, they are attracted to the volatile smell of alcohol, which can be an indicator of fermenting fruits to them. Have you ever seen a black witch in the wild? If so, then let me know in the comments. I always dreamed of seeing them in real life with my own eyes. There are so many moths that you will never get to see in the wild unless you travel. Now, a lot of people ask me if it's possible to breed this species. And I think that yes, it's possible. But before I continue, I must give a disclaimer. I have not personally raised or bred this species, nor have I attempted to. But I have a friend in the United States who was successful in breeding them and he sent me some information and I am willing to share it, but please understand it's not going to be my personal experience. So don't pin this on me if you disagree with the information. I'm just trying to uh, do my best to share what I can find, okay?
Now before you get too enthusiastic, it is however very difficult. These moths in captivity need a lot of space, first of all, uh, to be able to breed and lay eggs. So you're going to need a larger enclosure than people typically have, have available. I'm talking about an enclosure that's several meters in size, comparable to perhaps the size of a room. Now females, if you have a female and you take care of them, they can actually lay eggs in captivity. For example, this is the female and if I keep her, she is in fact going to lay some fertile eggs for me. So um, rearing the caterpillars, however, is also very difficult. I've been told that the caterpillars are strictly nocturnal and need a day and night rhythm. So they need um, a certain amount of daylight and a certain amount of darkness. And disrupting this cycle may cause the larva to stop feeding or die. That's what I've been told, it's not my experience. But I actually know a few people, um, especially one friend in the USA, that breeds these in captivity. So it is possible, if you are a moth breeder, it is possible to breed these moths. But it is very hard. Um, I've been told that the larva, for example, they hide during the day. For example, in cracks and crevices in the tree bark where they are very camouflaged. And at night they come out to feed, so they need this cycle of light and darkness where they can hide for most of the time. And then they need a, a period of dark so they can feed. It doesn't help that they eat uh, stuff like Robinia which dries out very fast. Second of all, the matings. I've been told that for matings you need a large enclosure of several meters. It's a, think about more like a, what people use for a butterfly garden. In the small moth breeding cages that I use on my channel most of the time, that's not going to work for this species. Um, yeah, and plants from the Fab Fabaceae family, like, uh, I'm not sure, I think it's like Albizia that they eat, and uh, other plants that are related to it. It's a very beautiful moth. Now, unfortunately, um, if I had more time here, I would uh, try to breed them myself. But that's not really possible today. I have about one month of time left here in Brazil. Now, in my opinion, one month is a lot of time, right? But it's not enough to complete the life cycle of this big insect. Because raising such a large moth from uh, eggs to caterpillars to pupa usually takes several months. So in, uh, in the one month that I have left, it's not going to be possible to breed them. And I also don't really have the permits to take them uh, back to the Netherlands, unfortunately. But I think, uh, I hope this was a nice video of me finally talking about an insect. That's, uh, people have been talking about it for years, and now it's finally on my channel, The Black Witch. And who knows, maybe if my channel gets more popular in the future, I will breed them for you as well. It's possible, I know what I need uh, in order to breed them. They just need a ridiculous amount of space, like, they need a whole room to themselves, really. Um, and they need dark surfaces, because the moths, they like to sit on dark surfaces where they're camouflaged. So, and I need a lot of feeding, a lot of space, and warmth. Warmth is also important because it's a tropical species. So, uh, it's very hard to provide these conditions in Europe, where I live, where I breed most of my moths in, uh, in captivity in the Netherlands. I would need probably like a butterfly house with artificial heating in a, to be able to breed these. But it is possible to breed them. Who knows, maybe if this channel someday has more viewers, more subscribers, and I have a bigger budget and I can afford uh, my own breeding space, like a laboratory or a greenhouse, then I will show you the life cycle of this moth as well. Thank you for watching, this was Bart with the Black Witch. Hey, if you disagree with any of this information, don't roast me. It didn't come from me, but from a friend. So take it as speculation, although I have faith that it's legit. And now, I am feeding the moths some fruit juice. But why? Why am I feeding them fruit juice? Well, because I harassed these animals a little for the production of this video. Unfortunately, that is part of my work as an entomologist that was hired to film and photograph the local moth species. To get a decent close-up for my database of local species, I need to capture them sometimes. Sorry. 
but in return for some of this stress, I hope to give the moths a free delicious meal and hope to return them back into nature with a stomach full of food. So at least they are not growing hungry or thirsty in my care before I release them back to nature. Enjoy the close-up of a black witch feeding from sugar water. That's right, yum yum. Hey, this is not YouTube content you're going to get from a lot of other people. And now my friends, it's time to release them back into nature before we start ending the show. Hope you like this special video about a black witch. I don't have enough time in Brazil to breed this species, unfortunately, so adios! I could show you their life cycle some other time, but this time I don't have enough time in Brazil to breed them. So uh, it would be selfish to keep them. Adios! There you go. My name is Bart Coppens, a traveling entomologist on social media that studies butterflies and moths and cares about the environment. Today I came all the way from the Netherlands to Brazil to help out the restoration of the Atlantic rainforest, one of the most deforested rainforests in the world. I joined a wildlife conservation and reforestation effort named Regua. Here as a volunteer, I am helping and trying to draw awareness to this project on social media while researching the butterflies and moths in the area and showing you the coolest insects on YouTube to draw awareness for them. Behind me is a tree nursery. Can you see it? Wow! Here the volunteers are growing thousands of native plants, trees and shrubs. These trees and plants will be planted in areas that were reforested, so the forest can be restored. And hopefully, these little baby trees that I am holding here will one day grow into a major rainforest and will be able to restore the environment and all the plants and animals that were once lost due to human influence. However, it is difficult for me to do this. My YouTube channel is completely permanently demonetized by YouTube and YouTube still refused to tell me why. What I do is expensive. Traveling the world is expensive. And I don't make money, not a single cent, from any of the videos that I upload. Therefore I want to remind you this channel is 100% crowdfunded. The, the donations of my fans, viewers and supporters are what enables me to travel the world go all the way to Brazil and help with reforestation and conservation of the environment. If you like the show, if you like what I do, consider donating to my channel. There are several options available in the links in the description. There's Patreon where you can buy a subscription, there's PayPal, there's Ko-Fi, there's many ways to send me a payment. All the funds I raise online will be used for the production of more videos for my research projects on insects and nature or to draw attention to wildlife and conservation projects like Regua here behind me. I'd love to show you more about it on YouTube, so subscribe and check out my other videos. Of course, I'm not entitled, you don't have to give me anything and it doesn't make you less of a viewer if you don't. I'm only reminding those who are willing and those who are able to donate. It's not an obligation, you can enjoy the stuff, of course, for free. I enjoy all your comments and viewership. This was Bart Coppens, I hope to see you again. Hope to see you next video, bye bye.